Hey, what's up, guys? This repair of the breach. Hope everyone's great. Revelation 13. The two beasts. Who are they? Many have given a lot of explanations on who they think the beast is, the first and second. But we will just follow what scripture says and see where it shows us what it indicates us that it is so revelation 13 has many parallels with the book of daniel daniel 2 daniel 7 daniel 8 is full of references that are similar or the same with revelation 13 But what does Revelation 13 say? Well, let's see. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. So first thing we see is that in Revelation 12:3 there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold the great dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads which is the exact same reference for the beast which gets his authority from the dragon now we know that he comes up out of the sea but we'll leave that for the end having seven heads and ten horns. So, first of all, what is a beast? Daniel 7.23 Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth. We shall be diverse from all the kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it into pieces. So, a beast is a kingdom. And in Daniel 7, it's the fourth beast, the fourth kingdom. And after this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. So the fourth beast, which is diverse from all the other ones, had ten horns. I consider the horns, and behold, there come up among them another, little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. So we see here the ten horns, and another little one, drove out of amongst them and uprooted three of them so ten with three uprooted makes them seven seven what what are horns well daniel 8 20 the ram which thou sawest having two horns are the kings of medea and persia and the rough goat is the king of Grecia. And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. So horns are kings. So seven horns are seven kings. And here is a mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. So the heads are mountains. And what is a woman? Jeremiah 6 2. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. So a woman is the daughter of Zion, is Israel. And I will betroth thee unto me forever. Yea, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness, and in judgment, and in loving kindness, and in mercies. So the woman is someone who has departed from God. 
apostasy. Like Israel is in apostasy with God right now. This kingdom, this beast is in apostasy right now. Now let's see who this beast really is. Is it one beast? Is it two beasts? Or is it actually three beasts that perform the same thing? Let's see. Now don't get me wrong. This Abrahamic Accord is just a rehearsal for the image of the beast in Jerusalem, the temple, which God will destroy. And to know that the cross is not in display because it is forbidden in the United Emirates. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard and his feet were at the, as the feet of the bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. So the kingdom which he saw St. John was like a leopard and his feet was as the feet of a bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Now anyone who has read the book of Daniel immediately will go to Daniel 7 where the four beasts are mentioned. The lion, the leopard, the bear and the dreadful beast, the fourth beast. Daniel 7 4 the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings the second was like a bear and it raised itself on one side and had three ribs in its mouth the kings of Medea and Persia Persians rose above the Medeans conquerors of Egypt Babylon and Lydia and the third beast was like unto a leopard and of course we know that the fourth beast was the dreadful beast who was different than all the other ones so it will look like the Greeks it will look like the leopards this kingdom will look like the Greeks it will conquer almost everyone the bear beside the Greeks the Orthodox because just as the bear tried to conquer Greece and never did, same will be with this kingdom and will speak like Nebuchadnezzar, will speak like Babylon. So let's get into it. King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. So he set up a image. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. So everybody was called. Then the princes, the governors, and captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the province were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up, and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages. So it is commanded to everybody. That at the, what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. And whoso falleth not down and worship him, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. So if you don't worship the image, you will be killed. Therefore, at the time when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all the kinds of music, all the people, 
the nations and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Wherefore, at the time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. Why? Because they were not worshipping the image. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. So they blessed the king, their enemy. Thou, O king, has made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. So that's the decree what to do, to worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth that he should be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. So that's the consequence. If you don't worship the image, you will die. Now, in Daniel 317, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. So they put their trust in God. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. And even if God doesn't save them, they will still not worship their false gods or the image. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. So they put their trust in the Lord, and no harm came upon them, because the Son of God was in the midst of them. And that, of course, is a foreshadowing of the future Antichrist, where when we don't bow down to the image and worship him, we will be killed and be beheaded for our witness and faith in Jesus and keeping the commandments of God. Daniel 4, 2. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God has wrought toward me. So there will be signs and wonders. I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. So he will have dreams and visions. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle Jesus and them that dwell in heaven the saints rejecting the communion of the saints and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations so the beast will have power over all the world except except who and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him the antichrist whose names are not written in the book of the life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world so the ones who will worship the antichrist are those not in christ if any man have an ear let him hear. Everybody else will worship the Antichrist, those not in Christ. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Now in Revelation 16.13 and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. So there are three false doctrines coming out of the mouth of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. Revelation 13 talks about the first beast and the false prophet. 
but who is the dragon? Well, of course it's the devil, but there will be also manifestation. The beast, the false prophet, and the dragon. And I believe the dragon mentioned here will come out of Israel. And the beast from Rome and the false prophet from evangelicals. So I'll leave it here and in part two we'll talk about the kingdoms, where they came from, who they are, and continue with the second beast who continues in the authority of the first beast who performs the miracles and has power to give life unto the image of the beast that it should both speak and cause meaning a declaration that everybody should receive a mark and those who will not worship the beast will be killed which ties in with the mouth of a lion speaking like the king of Babylon Nebuchadnezzar And the reason why I believe Israel is in the mix, Rabbinic Judaism, is because it's the great city, which means bridal, which means to control. And there remained among the children of Israel seven tribes which had not yet received their inheritance. Seven tribes, seven rulers, and they shall divide it into seven parts Judah shall abide in their coast on the south, and the house of Joseph shall abide in their coast on the north. So they are both at the coast. You shall therefore describe the land into seven parts, and bring the description hither to me, that I may cast lots for you before the Lord our God, to receive their inheritance. Now I'm talking about spiritual inheritance. But the Levites have no part among you, for the priesthood of the Lord is their inheritance, and Gad and Reuben and half the tribe of Manasseh have received their inheritance beyond Jordan on the east, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave them. So those received their inheritance, but the seven tribes have not yet. Ten and a half tribes. Well, 10 minus 3, we remain to 7. So could those 7 kings of the tribes be the 7 kings mentioned? And among them shall arise a little horn, the false messiah, the antichrist. Could it be about... Rome, where they uprooted three nations from the ten nations, and they remained only seven, which Rome ruled upon, and the one who came amongst them was the Vatican, which also fits the description. Many say it's America, but America for many reasons doesn't fit the description but in spiritual sense it could be America because Protestants are the daughters of Rome so when in Revelation it talks about the mother of all hollers and their daughters Protestants are their daughters in that interpretation now could it be Islam well, Islam doesn't fit the picture because Islam wasn't there until the 6th century. So how could it be talking about Islam? Yet Islam could play a role in the deception where, you know, we all have the same God. We all worship the same God. Abraham is our father, you know. That's what they're promoting now, everybody. And according to the Bible, the Islam is Antichrist. It's clear as day. 
so could the Antichrist be a Muslim? Well, he has to be from the tribe of Judah to fulfill the prophecies. So could he be a Jewish Muslim? He will also have to be from Assyria. So could he be a Jewish Muslim Chaldean? Living in Damascus, for example. That could be a possibility. But we will see. So the next video, we will look into the kingdoms the fourth kingdom which had the ten horns which are the ten toes which broke and the kingdom was divided after that we saw the roman empire and the eastern empire broke and then we had the fall of rome with their ten kings and three uprooted and we only had seven after that with the Vatican being the ruler over them. A small nation amongst them who uprooted three and ruled over seven kingdoms. We'll also talk about the deadly wound most likely or in part three. So stay tuned. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.